but let's take a look at the red set. These are new cards in mono red for Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Our first card on the new list for mono red is Abandon the Post. For one and a red, you get a sorcery. Up to two target creatures can't block this turn. And it has flashback, so you can cast this card from your graveyard for three and a red. So basically, you're scaring away two target creatures. You get to swing through. Um, it's sorcery speed, so you have to play it before combat. Um, which is pretty good. The second card is Ardent Emilist. Emil Elementalist, Ardent Elementalist. For three and a red, you get a 2 1 human shaman. When Ardent Elementalist enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So, this is pretty interesting. If you want to, you could return Abandon the Post back to your hand, cast it again, so you could play this card three times if you wanted. Or if you have more than one Elementalist, you can play it a bunch of times. Um, yeah, so you get a 2-1 Human Shaman, and you get an instant or sorcery returned to your hand. The next card in Mono Red is Bloodthirsty Adversary. So this is our Adversary card for Red. It's a 1 and a Red for a 2-2 Vampire with Haste. When Bloodthirsty Adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay 2 and a Red any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on Bloodthirsty Adversary. Then, exile up to that many target instant or sorcery cards with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard and copy them. You may cast any number of those copies without paying their mana cost. So you can exile... Um, basically, it gives you a bunch of free spells. Um, as long as you're okay with never casting them again for the rest of the game, um, you get three free spells. Not three. You get a bunch of free spells. So, let's do some math again. We've been doing this for all the adversary cards, so let's do some math. Uh, if you have um, 14 mana on board, you spend two of that mana, you tap two of that mana to cast Bloodthirsty Adversary. Um, so you tap two to cast Bloodthirsty Adversary, and then you tap. So then, then you tap the rest of your mana, so 12 mana, to make four. Wait, no. Yeah. So you tap 12 mana to pay your two in a red four times. So you put four counters on Bloodthirsty Adversary. So Adv Bloodthirsty Adversary becomes a 6-6. Six, six. And then you can cast six spells from your graveyard for free. As long as they have mana cost of three or less. So you exile six mana, or you exile six instants or sorceries from your graveyard and as long as they have three or less in mana cost you can cast them without paying their mana costs you may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana cost that is pretty crazy so the next <laughs> red so that's the red adversary card all of us uh, all of the adversary cards have been very very good um, in this set so far, and this is no different. Very, very strong card. Um, the Brimstone Vandal is a card we've gone over already. It's two and a red for a 2-3 Devil Creature with Menace. And this is your day-night cycle trigger. Um, if it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Brimstone Vandal enters the battlefield, which starts the day-night cycle. Whenever day becomes night, or night becomes day, Brimstone Vandal deals one damage to each opponent. So you get to chip away, it becomes a nuisance because it just happens every time the day-night card flips over. The next red card is Burn Down the House. 
three a red red for a sorcery. You choose one. Burn down the house. Deals five damage to each creature and each planeswalker. You could essentially wipe the board. Or you create three one one red devil creatures with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. And they gain haste until end of turn. So you could attack immediately with these one one red devils. It's an interesting card. The next red card is Burn the Accursed for four and a red. It's an instant. Burn the Accursed deals five damage to target creature and two damage to that creature's controller. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So you get to exile, you get to deal two damage to a player. Pretty awesome. It is a little expensive, five, uh, five mana. Um, but you're doing five damage to a creature, and you're doing two damage to a controller. And it is exiled, so if it has a flashback cost or... Um, a way to cast things from the graveyard. You can't cast it because it'll be exiled instead of be put into the graveyard. The next red card is Cathartic Pyre. For one and a red, it's an instant. Choose one. Cathartic Pyre deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker. Or you can discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. So if you've got shit in your hands that you don't want or that you want to put into your graveyard, um there's a lot of stuff with flashback um you can put up to two cards in your graveyard and then draw that many cards the next red card in red is uh curse of the shaken faith for one and a red it's an aura curse enchant player when enchanted player casts a spell other than the first spell they cast each turn or copies a spell curse of the shaken deals two damage to them so you're going to want it's going to keep players from purposefully choosing to cast a second spell every turn and spells count as everything so um casting two creatures casting an instant and a creature casting an enchantment and a an instant or a sorcery as soon as they pay mana to cast their second spell um this enchantment this curse will do two damage to them um, and that can get really annoying. Could even lose you the game if you don't deal with it fast enough. Um, the next card in red is Electric Revelation. For two in a red, it's an instant. As an additional co cost to cast the spell, discard a card. And you draw two cards. And then you can pay, cast it again from your graveyard for three in a red pretty good uh not a ton of like not a ton of instant card draw in red so this is is pretty good the next red card is falcon wrath perv perforator i don't know why my brain had a hard time with that word falcon wrath perforator for one and a red you get a two one vampire creature whenever falcon wrath Perforator attacks, it deals one damage to defending player. So you swing for two and it's gonna deal one to the player no matter what. Pretty pretty good. Pretty fun aggro red card, like most red cards. The next card is Falcon Wrath Pit Fighter. For one red, you get a two one vampire warrior. And you can pay one and a red to discard a card, sacrifice a vampire. And for that, you get to draw two cards, activate only if an opponent lost life this turn. So this is a post-combat um, ability. Pretty good. The next red card is Famished Foragers. Three and a red. I believe we went over this last week as well. Uh, for three and a red, you get a 4-3 Vampire creature. When Famished Foragers enters the battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, add three red mana to your mana pool. You can pay two and a red to discard a card and then draw a card. Um, the next red card is another one we went over last week, Festival Crasher. For one and a red, you get a 1-3 Devil Creature. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Festival Crasher gets two, plus two, plus zero until end of turn. 
So it becomes a 3-3 until end of turn every time you cast an instant or sorcery. Uh, the next red card is Geist Flame Reservoir. For two and a red, it's an artifact. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Gar's Geist Flame Reservoir. Then, you can pay one and a red to tap Geist Flame Reservoir. Remove any number of charge counters from the reservoir. It deals that much damage to any target. So you can slowly build this up. Build it up, build it up, build it up. Every time you cast an instant or sorcery, you get to put a charge counter on Geist Flame Reservoir. And then, if you have 20 counters on Geist Flame Reservoir, you can pay 2 mana, tap it, and deal 20 damage to anything you want. Any player, any creature, anything. Or, you can pay 2 and a red to tap Geist Flame Reservoir. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. So that does not remove any charge counters. And if it's a sorcery or instant, you can play it this turn and then add charge counters to Geist Flame. Um, pretty interesting. The next card, this is actually, let's hold on on Geist Flame Reservoir for a second. This card is a very, very useful engine, damage engine in red. Um, and I think that there's almost no instance where you do not want to have Geist Flame Reservoir in your red deck, um, especially as there's a lot of lightning, instant damage spells in red that will immediately add charge counters to Geist Flame Reservoir. It's, it's a very prolific little machine that you can... It's, it's almost self-sustaining because you're going to be casting instant sorceries unless you're playing like a goblins deck where you're casting more creatures than um, instants and sorceries. Um, it's, it's pretty pretty great. If you're maybe dipping in red too, um, if you're just splashing in red, this might be a very useful card to consider putting in your red splash deck because um, being able to throw damage at any target um, is very powerful. So the next card in red is Immolation. For one red, it's an enchantment aura, and you enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, minus two. So this is interesting if you have like a Festival Crasher, um, which is a 1-3, it becomes a 3-1. Um, there's, lots, there's lots of reasons why this would be a very powerful um, little setup if you've got some defenders and you want to do more attacking or you've got a very powerful creature that's say say you have an 8-8 it becomes a 10-6 and that's that's a very powerful aura especially for just one little red mana the next red card is Lampolt Harrier for one and a red it's a 2-2 wolf creature and it has a mana ability a 3 and a red the target creature can't block this turn so this is very fun um obviously it's a cheap creature for only a 2-2 but it has a lot of um good usefulness to it because you're looking at a situation where um, you pay four mana and something of value on your opponent's battlefield cannot block that's going to be very useful the next red card is light up the knight for x and a red a sorcery light up the knight deals x damage to any target it deals X plus one damage instead if that target is a creature or planeswalker. So however much mana you spend to cast it is how much mana it deals in damage. Um, if you target a creature or a planeswalker, rather than say a player, um, it will do that much damage plus one. And then this has flashback. Um, for three and a red, you can remove X loyalty counters from am amongst planeswalkers you control. If you cast the spell this way, X can't be zero. So you can pay three and a red to recast this spell. Um, 
And if you do, you can pay X loyalty counters from Planeswalkers, and that will deal the damage to your target um, that way. So it's an interesting little tweak on the flashback mechanic because I think that paying X mana is a little bit tricky when you're in doing a flashback uh, spell. So that's interesting. Uh, the next red card is Lunar Frenzy for X and a red. Instant speed. Target creature you control gets plus X plus zero and gains first strike and trample. Uh, so you pay five and a red and a target creature you control gets plus five plus zero until end of turn and gets first strike. So it's a very powerful instant. Um, it's going to be very useful. I'm going to see a lot of use. I'm going to see a lot of play of this. The next red card is Moon Rager Slash. For two and a red, you get an instant spell. Um, this spell costs two less to cast if it's night. So it costs just one red mana if it's nighttime. Moon Ranger Slash deals three damage to any target. So one mana to deal three damage. Or if it's daytime, you have to pay three mana to deal three damage. Pretty good. The next card is Moonvale Regent, this fancy looking dragon. That's gorgeous art. For three and a red, oh, it's mythic. Uh, for three and a red, you get a 4 4 dragon creature with flying. Whenever you cast a spell, you may discard your hand. If you do, draw a card for each of that spell's colors. For what? Whenever you cast a spell, oh, okay. So if you're casting multicolor spells, you get to draw cards for each different color on that spell. When Moonvale Regent dies, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of colors amongst permanents you control. So Moonvale Regent is a very powerful card to have in a five color deck, um, dragon deck, a Tiamat deck if you want to use a recent example of a powerful dragon. Um, yeah, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of colors amongst permanents you control. So that means it's up to five max, right? Because there's only five colors of magic. So it's not as powerful, but it is, it's only four mana, and it's only a 4-4 four, four dragon. So while it has some interesting mechanics, it's not incredibly powerful. It's just very beautiful. The next red card is Mounted Dread Knight. Four and a red for a 5-4 Vampire Knight with Trample. Mounted Dread Knight enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it if an opponent lost life this turn. So this is very interesting because you can it, it can enter the battlefield as a 6-5 if you play it um, after an opponent has lost life. So you want to do one of your spells in red that deals damage directly to a target. Make sure that the player you're targeting has lost life. Um, and if it does, then Mounted Dread Knight becomes more powerful when it enters the battlefield. Um, the next red card is Neonate's Rush. For two and a red, you get an instant spell. This spell costs one less to cast if you control a vampire which it's Midnight Hunt, so you probably will control a vampire. Neonate's Rush deals one damage to target creature and one damage to its controller. Draw a card. So, it could be a two-mana spell. The spell costs one less to cast if you control a vampire, so it'll cost one and a red, and it deals two damage. One damage to a creature, one damage to a controller, and then you get to draw a card. That's a pretty, pretty good little uh, variety there. The next red card is Obsessive Astro Astro Astronomer. Wow. Today is not a good day for my brain and the speaking of the words. Obsessive Astronomer. For one and a red, you get a 2-2 human wizard creature. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Obsessive Astronomer enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. So this is a card draw. Um, 
and it's your kickoff for the day-night cycle if it hasn't already kicked off yet. The next red card is Pax Betrayal. For two and a red, it's a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn if you control a wolf or a werewolf, scry two. So you get to steal a creature from an opponent. Um, you get to untap it, so even if it's tapped, you get to use it. Um, and if you have a wolf or a werewolf, you get to scry two, which is overall pretty good. The next card is something we went over last week. Play with fire for one red. You get to deal two damage to any target. If a player is dealt damage this turn, this way, scry one. So you get to deal two damage, and if you target a player, you get to scry one. Um, the next red card is Purifying Dragon. The, the pure Dorgan. Um, for three, a red red. You get a 4-3 dragon creature with flying. Whenever Purifying Dragon attacks, it deals one damage to target creature defending player controls. If that creature is a zombie, Purifying Dragon deals two damage to it instead. So there's a lot of black cards that create 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. And this will kill them. Every time it attacks, you get to kill one of those zombie creatures. Even if it's not the one blocking long as your opponent controls it that's pretty pretty good that's kind of a better card than moonvale regent i mean moonvale regent is a little more complicated for sure but as far as aggro red magic the gathering goes purifying dragon is pretty good the next red card is raise the effigy for one red you get to choose one destroy target artifact or target attacking creature gets plus two plus two till end of turn that's, that's pretty good. That's a very green card, actually. Um, there's a lot of green cards that have those kind of choices to them. And this is in red, so that's pretty fun. Oh, pardon me. Well, the next red card is Seize the Storm for four and a red. This is a sorcery. Create a red elemental creature token with trample and... This creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard, plus the number of cards with flashback you own in exile. So you get to create a red elemental with varying powers. It's going to be large because you're most likely going to have a lot of instants and sorceries in your graveyard. Um, and it also has flashback, so you may cast this card again for 7 mana from your graveyard, then exile it. That's, that's a late game game changer right there, that card. Uh, the next red card is Stolen Vitality. For 1 and a red is an instant. Target creature gets plus 3, plus 1 until end of turn. If it's your turn, that creature gains Trample until end of turn. Otherwise, it gains first strike until end of turn. So if you buff a defending creature, it will get first strike. If you buff an attacking creature, it will gain trample. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, the next red card is Sunstreak Phoenix. Lots of phoenixes in red lately. This one is two a red red. It's a mythic for a 4-2 phoenix with flying. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Sunstreak Phoenix enters the battlefield. Get it? Because it's on fire. So it becomes day. Because it's bright. Because it's on fire. Uh, when day becomes night, or night becomes day, you may pay one and a red. If you do, return Sunstreak Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So, like most Phoenix cards in Magic the Gathering... Uh, there is a way to bring it back from the dead, raise it from the ashes, if you will. Um, and in this very particular case, it is paying one and a red every time it becomes night or day. The next red card is Thermo Alchemist. For one and a red, you get a 0-3 Human Shaman, the steampunk-looking crazy motherfucker. Uh, and it has Defender. It's only it's got zero power, so of course. 
Um, you can tap it, and Thermal Alchemist deals one damage to each opponent. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you can untap Thermal Alchemist. So you can use his tap ability multiple times in a turn because every time you cast an instant or sorcery, he untaps. Interesting, interesting little, uh, little way. Uh, the next red card is Voldaren Ambusher. For two and a red, you get a 2-2 two -two Vampire Archer. That's pretty cool. Looks like an elf there. Uh, when Voldaren Ambusher enters the battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, it deals X damage to one target creature or planeswalker, where X is the number of vampires you control. So this is a very um, intriguing card for the heavy vampire decks, because if you have 10 vampires on the board, it will deal 10 damage to target creature or planeswalker uh, when it enters the battlefield. And it's pretty cheap. It's not a super powerful card, um, but it has a pretty powerful ability if you play your cards in the right order. The last red card in this set, as far as new red cards goes, is Voldaren Stinger. For one red mana, you get a 1-1 one, one Vampire Warrior. Voldaren Stinger has first strike as long as it's attacking. And you can pay two and a red, and Voltaire and Stinger gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So it's just another one of those red cards where if you're attacking with it, you can buff it at the last second. Um, and it gets first strike, so it won't take any damage if you kill your opponent. And that's it for red. There's a couple... I'm, I'm happy that they're bringing back Phoenixes because those are always fun to play. They're always fun to play against because you're always concerned about creatures coming back from the graveyard. I think that um, stuff like the Curse of the Shaken Faith is very interesting. Um, but the Bloodthirsty Adversary, this might be my favorite adversary card out of the whole format so far. Um, each monocolor has had an adversary card so far, and this Bloodthirsty Adversary might be the most potent one because you get to play a number of spells and sorceries from your graveyard without paying their mana cost. Um, other interesting things are combinations of like emulation with creatures that have defending. Um, this Geist Flame Reservoir is almost a must for anybody playing mono red or splashing red. Um, yeah. Nothing super crazy. I like the Phoenix as a mythic. I like the Purifying Dragon, especially if you're playing against Black. Um, stuff like the Moonveil region is very, very intriguing. Um, it's got a pretty complicated set of rules. Uh, yeah, and we're going to take a, just a quick break, and we will jump back into the list and... Go for through the green card.